Okay, hi everyone, Daryl here. Uh, this is a follow-up video on something that I put up on YouTube maybe about like, I think maybe five years ago on the locations to purchase uh, properties in Bangkok. Uh, generally, if you're looking for a, for a property to invest or to purchase in Bangkok for own stay, then uh, I actually highlighted uh, where are the various locations which should be, you should be looking out for. Uh, so since the last time I put out that video, which was I think maybe like five or six years ago, right? Um, Bangkok has the Bangkok Rail Network has uh, changed extensively uh, in in a good way. The rail network has extended um, across many other different lines. Uh, obviously, if you're a tourist, right, you would be familiar with the Sky Train, uh, which is the Bangkok Sky Train, which uh, goes along places like uh, Siam, Chitlong, Asok, where Terminal Twenty One is. Then uh, Prom Pong, Ekamai, Tong Law. So these are locations which uh, tourists uh, generally gravitate towards. And of course, there's the blue color MRT line, which uh, maybe brings you down to Satom Ceylon area. Then also brings you up to the Chatuchat area. You can get off the MRT station, Kampeng Pet, and then it will actually bring you right into the heart of uh, Chatuchat. So actually, there are, there are quite a lot of tourists who don't, don't know this, but if you want to get to Chatuchat, right, actually the blue color MRT line. Uh, brings you right into Chatucha rather than actually having to take the sky train and go to Mochit, then alighting and then walking. Okay, so um, since that period of time, right, uh, since the last time I put up the, the video, the train metro network in Bangkok has uh, grown significantly. And, and I think it's uh, timely that maybe I do another follow-up video on uh, where to purchase properties in Bangkok. Okay, so um, some little bit of information about us. Um, I've been dealing with Bangkok properties since 2012. Uh, I've got a team uh, in the company as well. So our clients come from uh, China, Hong Kong, Singapore, Japan, Malaysia, Indonesia. We have a Facebook closed group. You can take down the URL and you can uh, click to request to join the Facebook closed group. That's how Facebook uh, manages the groups. The admin has to admit the, the members to the closed group. But what happens is that inside the closed group, there are different buyers, sellers, landlords, tenants uh, of various Thai properties. And they usually put the, their, their property into the Facebook closed group. Then at times there were transactions that were concluded from the Facebook closed group, or maybe some agents may contact you. Uh, then there's this Facebook page and uh, primarily we work on our YouTube channel. So if you go to YouTube and then you search Invest Bangkok Property, uh, you can find our channel. That's actually where you are watching this video. Okay, so if you find our content useful, it would help that you just click the subscribe button. Uh, if you like any of the videos, of course you can uh, share and then hit the like button as well. Okay, so about us, right? Our company is IBP Real Estate Company Limited. We're a registered company in Thailand and we are based in Bangkok. Uh, we deal with the sale and rental of uh, properties, uh, but uh, generally our focus is on Bangkok only. I'll touch on that a little bit uh, slightly later. But we have a property management arm. So what this means is that after you purchase the property from us, uh, we, will, we will also manage the property for our clients who request for property management services. Uh, what this means is that uh, after you purchase the property, you may need an agent to rent or sell the property. Maybe you can sell it for a profit, then uh, our agency can do it for you. But property management is so much more than that. Uh, if you're not uh, based in Bangkok, you're not living in Bangkok, you might need uh, people to manage your property for you. If it's vacant, right, then every month uh, we would actually have to go down uh, open up, uh, clean up the unit, uh, take charge of paying all the utilities. Because if you don't pay the utilities in Bangkok, right, uh, your the the meter might get cut off. Okay, then later when there's a reinstatement fee to it as well. And also you need to declare your income taxes from the rental income that you receive from your Thai property. So these are the things that the property management arm of IBP Real Estate uh, will manage. Okay, uh, and there's a small fee every year that you sort of, uh, it's a retainer fee for the property management team to manage your property under our portfolio. Okay, and many clients actually ask us, um, do you do properties outside of Bangkok? Maybe I want to buy 
a property in Pattaya or Phuket? And the, the simple answer to that question is uh, we don't because our focus is only on Bangkok. We have developers who are developing outside of Bangkok and obviously um, being working with these developers, right? they do uh, pass us uh, properties outside of Bangkok, but um, we don't focus on them. So if clients uh, specifically ask, right, then uh, we, we would maybe then forward it to them. But other than that, we don't really do it because after we sell the property in let's say like Pattaya, right, uh, we can't actually conduct viewing because um, well, we're based in Bangkok, okay? So a few things right before we head down into the different locations uh, and I'll actually explain the train lines uh, to everyone but we need to understand right uh, why do we invest in Bangkok and why consider Bangkok um, these, are, these are just small uh, factors which uh, would maybe help with your buying decision but in general uh, Thailand has a very low medium age in terms of its population but yet a very high literacy rate Okay, so in comparison, right, uh, like neighboring Cambodia is a lot lower at 3.91. Uh, Singapore, uh, being in Southeast Asia as, as well, uh, sets the benchmark at 97.6%. Okay, so the stability of the government, right, uh, Thailand finally has a new prime minister. Uh, so this new prime minister, right, uh, if you, you guys don't already know, right, um, was the CEO of one of the largest developers in Thailand. And... We feature that developer uh, pretty extensively and many of our clients have purchased properties from that developer. But anyway, he's no longer the CEO. He stepped down uh, so that he can become the new Prime Minister. Uh, generally, I think uh, every now and then there is some political upheaval, but the constitutional monarchy keeps things in check. So if you see, right, um, whenever the king comes out, uh, now Thailand has a new king from you know the previous king, but Whenever the king comes out and comments on something, uh, generally people do uh, respect the, the constitutional monarchy system that is in place. Okay, uh, and one thing to note right, is that the investment from the Chinese right, hardly fell during periods of turmoil. That means when, the, when, there, were, when there were riots, uh, where you know, COVID-19 was ravaging the economy, the Chinese uh, still uh, continued to plow money into, uh, into Thailand. Uh, although these are things that we cannot speculate in the future, uh, China is going through uh, some economic crisis of its own currently. So we do not know whether the buying um, the buying enthusiasm from the Chinese right will come back in full force like what it was before COVID. Uh, but generally, what ha what is happening now is that we are starting to receive. Um, quite a lot of queries from uh, mainland Chinese and people from Hong Kong or even Taiwan, Japan and they are looking to purchase properties in, in Bangkok and it, it speaks a lot when we are starting to get brochures uh, in Chinese that means that developers in Bangkok are preparing brochures in Chinese and then uh, they actually give us prices uh, that convert back to, to renminbi or Hong Kong dollar uh, so you can see where the where the general demand uh, is coming from and this is something we see picking up from month to month okay uh, so don't discount the fact of a highly efficient rail network okay so you can't you can't build a rail network overnight okay it doesn't it doesn't happen that way it has to uh, go through like a certain degree of planning and the rail network that uh, Bangkok has currently right is uh, really quite extensive as compared to what it was maybe a decade ago okay so two fully functioning international airports in Suwanapum and uh, Dong Wong uh, you can see that even from Dong Wong right now you can take the red line down uh, to the heart of uh, Bangkok uh, from Dong Wong so a lot of people used to you know focus on just landing in Suwanapum but now you actually have the option of uh, going to Dong Wong which actually is closer to uh, central Bangkok as, as compared to Suwanapum but the main reason people didn't uh, many people favored Suwanapum is because there was the airport rail link which uh, brought uh, travelers from Suwanapum directly into uh, the heart of the uh, Bangkok uh, which is around like Payatai and and that is quite close to like Siam, Siam Paragon area already 
Okay, uh, we're not going to cover on the tax and legal structure that uh, that calls for a separate pre pre presentation. I think I've uh, placed certain information on on tax and legal structure in uh, separate videos. Uh, but generally, right, uh, in terms of acquisition and holding taxes, uh, Thailand has relatively low taxes when it comes to uh, purchasing properties and holding properties. So foreigners can purchase property and hold a physical title to the properties. This is very important. Uh, I, I've had clients who come to me and say and that you know um, I may want to invest in a property in Vietnam because uh, Vietnam or maybe Indonesia because there is more growth than uh, that I perceive as compared to uh, Bangkok but then when I go dig deeper right then it seems like they are setting up a corporate structure to hold the property uh, somewhat in trust for them and then there's, there's normally a there's no, uh, normally a nominee director or nominee shareholder of that company which obviously also holds in trust for the beneficial owner which is the foreigner and and it would it would be important to note right that um, some of these nominee structures in essence or like you know these some of these trust structures right are there to circumvent the jurisdiction which is set up in that particular country so the trust structure that you set up might not uh, hold weight in the court of law in that country. Okay, so this is something to take note of. But in Thailand, right, when you own a Thai property, the, the title deed is in your name. Uh, somewhat, of course, you need to convert your English name to uh, Thai Sanskrit, which obviously I have done because I own a property in, uh, in Bangkok. But that is the title that you hold, the whole, the title is in your personal name, which is very important. Okay, Thailand is very open, okay, so there's this uh, Trans Asian Rail Network, which I don't think I'm going to talk much about, but uh, it's actually this uh, One Belt, One Road, which plan which uh, China is uh, putting forth, whereby it leads all the way up, up to Kunming, China, and then obviously the high speed rail network goes down to, a uh, hopefully Singapore, Okay, so uh, Bangkok's uh, relationship with the rest of the world is actually uh, quite significant because uh, Bangkok is the number one most visited city in the world. Okay, so 22.78 million overnight uh, foreign overnight visitors. Okay, so Thailand is also quite open in terms of trade. There's many free trade agreements in place. So there's still uh, quite significant room for growth to happen in the Thai economy. Okay, so the Thai economy is uh, doing relatively well as picking up from uh, the COVID pandemic. Of course, in COVID period, right, it shrank 6.2%, which was actually quite worrying. Uh, okay, but the GDP growth expansion that's happening now, right, uh, it's uh, broad-based GDP expansion, not not mainly rely on tourism, but this is something that we've, we've known for quite, quite a few years already. So these are things to take note of. Okay, so um, the current Thai property situation, right? Please take note if you're a foreign buyer, there's limited financing options. Uh, I think the only two foreign banks that are lending to foreigners, right? Because you can't take from a local, a local Thai bank, uh, you have to pay in your foreign in a foreign currency, not in Thai, but if you're a foreigner. Uh, so they can get this foreign exchange transaction slip uh, and then you can transfer the title to your name. Okay, but uh, generally what happens is that um, yeah, there's limited financing options for foreign buyers and developers need to purchase existing properties for redevelopment if they want to build in downtown Bangkok. So when you when you come into Bangkok, right, then you see, oh, there's a lot of land, but in downtown Bangkok, it isn't the case. Um, one of the developments which uh, was completed recently is this development by Origin Properties, which is Park Origin Tong Law. And if you go to Park Origin Tong Law, it used to be this a huge area called Arena 10. It was a place whereby there was um, some futsal pitches and then uh, nightclubs. But now the nightclubs and the futsal pitches were purchased by the developer for redevelopment and now built into a condominium. Okay, so now we go into the, the, the presentation proper. Uh, and usually, uh, while this is not something that uh, anybody has done, I prefer to break up the, the analysis of where to purchase properties in Bangkok right into these three 
uh, regions okay so there's always the core central region then we talk about the city fringes and then the growth areas so if you obviously if you go to the core central regions then um, usually it's more expensive okay and if you want to update right to to the article which i wrote and to the video right you can always go to my website i'll leave it in the in the description the link in the uh, in the description of this um, this uh, video but i've actually broken down all the different areas into essentially what i'm presenting to you now so if you want the 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 written version of what i'm i'm going to say today right uh, or, or in this video then you can always refer back to my uh, blog article on my personal website okay there's this uh, map which is going around uh, we actually downloaded it from this faculty of engineering in mahido university and i think this is one of the most comprehensive um, maps of uh, bangkok uh, and what I'll do right is that I'll put it up here. Sorry, I'll put it up. Did this? Okay, I'll put it up here. Okay, so this is the Bangkok Rail Network, right? And if you guys see right, so my normal uh my normal point of um, analysis will always start from ASO okay because this is usually where um, you know like tourists uh, are very familiar with okay so ASO right is the intersection between the green BTS line and the uh, blue color MRT line okay and this is where terminal 21 is so in in Thailand uh, certain train lines are not are run by different operators so if let's say you want to go the station in Asok that is above ground which is the SkyTrain uh, you get off Asok BTS station you got to walk a very very short distance to uh, Sukhumvit MRT it's actually linked and it's sheltered uh, so maybe it takes you like about like half a minute to to get to the place where you tap your card or maybe like uh, it's, it's only like what just go down an escalator and then you get to Sukhumvit MRT already but this is where this is where you, uh, tourists usually gravitate towards okay and Siam is where Siam Paragon is so what we used to contain our analysis to right was this green line and we most probably only pushed it up to around Ari and then we ended off with maybe somewhere around Onut but since that period of time right a lot of things have happened uh, south of Ari one of the things is um, the Bangsa Grand Station has already completed so there is a possibility that uh, not, not only a possibility but there's demand uh, gravitating uh, towards uh, this area and if you ask a lot of the local Thais or even some of the foreign expats who want to live in Thailand um, the area around Lak Prao is generally quite favored as well okay um if you guys are into like night markets i i don't know at the point in time when you're watching this video whether the night market will still be there but the new job fair is actually quite near higher lap prao okay so in, when you get off higher lap prao right um high up means five intersection of lap prao so what this means is that well uh, when you you go here right you're supposed to generally be linked to many different lines uh, okay but uh i I don't know why they name it that actually okay but okay when you 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 get out this higher lap prao right if uh, for some of you who are familiar with this mall called union mall uh, it's actually quite near higher lap prao um usually people will take the mrt line and get off the pahan yotin uh, mrt line okay uh, and this area right uh is quite residential in terms of the upper middle class of the people of the locals who are living in Bangkok right they uh, they do favor places like uh, Lak Prao so this whole area is still quite popular okay and uh, the Bouncer Gray station is located, located around here so you can see this uh, Krung Tet Api Wat right this is the Bouncer Grand station this area okay uh, and if you see the Bouncer Grand station is quite it's quite grand that's why it's called Grand station it's quite large it's, quite substantial in size and I don't think that uh, there are many residential options in that area 
because because it's so big right so there's no like mall or like amenities not that many as compared to places like Lat Prao so now the analysis goes up to Lat Prao or the consideration goes up to Lat Prao and we've had some clients who were purchasing properties uh, around Lat Prao and uh, some actually sold off or already rented out and quite decent income okay then there's this yellow line right that links Lat Prao all the way down to the other end of the green BTS line which means that uh, you still can travel along this yellow line and and then since the last video that I did many many years ago right oh no it's not the end uh, we've we've actually had clients who purchase properties in Punaviti um, especially the true digital park area um, there's like a whole ecosystem when it comes to tech ecosystem and uh, and this huge mall and workspace that's happening at Punaviti so this is one place of con uh, consideration as well if you're looking for an area whereby uh, demand for rental or maybe the possibility of uh, growth in property prices right is going to happen so Punaviti would be a part of your consideration as well but generally, I think so far, right, the, the area which uh, is still extremely popular are places like uh, Tonglo, Ekamai, Onut. Okay, so these three areas, right, are very, very uh, well stocked in terms of amenities. And that's the main re reason why the demand for rental around these areas from very good tenants, right, uh, it, they can be expatriates or they can be, uh, I mean, it's, it's not a, a secret that you know Japanese tenants are are favored um, are the favorite tenants for many landlords but this area right has very very good tenants in terms of um, the profile of the tenants being from uh, good paying jobs um, and then these tenants tend to be uh, family tenants that means uh, you know like whereby there's uh, mother and father and then the children come together so you need to know the area as well if you don't know the area right like for example my condominium uh, i i purchased a place in aso but because aso uh, is quite close to some maybe uh, party area so usually right families don't stay in this area i i used to like to stay in this area okay because it is very well connected but in my personal opinion now right i would prefer to live live and uh and work around tonglo ekamai and uh, prakanon okay uh, essentially ekamai is where our office is okay so we'll we'll gravitate back to this uh this map shortly this is the old map which i was using uh so like i mentioned right uh now we can consider bouncer chatuchat lap prao area then of course the Silong Satom area right is the so-called traditional uh, central business district of Bangkok. Uh, then this uh, Chitlong Plonchi area right is your Siam all this type of area. Okay, so where your also considered CBD but uh, more like the shopping belt. Okay, so Rama Nine area right um, has grown considerably as well. Uh, this is the so-called newer CBD. So if you hear. Uh, the Thai say, oh, you know, I work in Rama 9, right? Yeah, they actually have quite a few uh, multinational corporations which have set up their offices in and around Rama 9. Uh, one of the most notable um, company to set up its international HQ is Unilever. And the Unilever HQ is located in Rama 9. So if you come out of uh, Paramkao, uh, Pra Ram 9 uh, MRT station, you walk towards now the the now there's a night market called job fair okay job fair is like the hottest night market now but anyway it's uh, next to g tower so you look at g tower next to it right is unilever hq okay and of course tong law ekamai okay so the bouncer chatu chat lap Prao area right like i mentioned uh it's actually thailand's and asians asian's uh transport hub sorry yeah so there's a high speed rail to Chiang Mai, Hua Hin, Kunming, China. That's supposed that's the plan, okay. The, the high speed rail is to, supposed to extend to Kunming, China. Okay, and it's actually the center of the uh, Bangkok Mass 
transit system okay so it replaces the existing #bangkok# station I wouldn't say existing because I don't know whether #kuala lumpur# is still uh, operational but I don't think so okay or maybe they moved everything to #bangsa# already okay um it, it actually is poised to position Thailand as a key trading hub in Southeast Asia and uh, this was the estimation of about 300,000 people a day but I think we had to push this forward uh, because during 2020 right there was, there was COVID but I left it in um, just to show you guys what, what was the plan okay so uh, where to invest in Bangkok right um, why is it that you look at the bigger picture right it's because this is a pan-Asia rail network whereby it's supposed to lead up to Kunming China and then lead further down to uh, Kuala Lumpur, M Malaysia and hopefully uh, the KL and Singapore line does materialize. This was uh, many years ago when we took the photograph while they were building it. Uh, this is the Bangsa Grand Station now. So if you go to Bangsa Grand Station, you would be able to see this station. They renamed it as this uh, Chrome Tap. Apiwat Central Terminal, but I still call it Bouncer Grand Station. Okay, so um, the next next portion right is the CBD area or the Core Central Region. Okay, uh, this is where we sort of uh, cluster the CBD area. The prime CBD area now is quite hard to find. So if you're looking for a property that can attract highly paid expatriates, right? Those in the Central Business District working expatriates and a lot of times uh, these are corporate leases that companies might come to you to lease um, then these are the areas and one of the things to take note of is that you need a good agent so a good agent will advise you accordingly what type of investment to consider like let's say my clients if they are looking for a property in uh, let's say ASOP then they will ask me okay uh, buy one bedroom or two bedroom then I will tell them actually around this area uh, not many good international schools and also right this is a party area so generally families don't come here to stay so it would be better if you uh, considered a one bedroom more than a two bedroom because you're not going to get families who want a two bedroom in this area the families would normally gravitate towards locations which are more family friendly okay and that is the that is the value add which you need to get from your property agent okay so the the trend of affluent buyers uh, buying up luxury homes in the cbd is always happening okay so the best of everything is always in bangkok cbd okay so like i mentioned uh this is the mahanakon this is wireless 98 we did a feature of it uh this is sign paragon okay um then next right okay i think we we'll focus back on the map so the CBD area right is here. So I'm talking about places like Siam or even Ratatouille, Chitlong, Plonchit. So this area here. Okay, and also this Silom, Lumpini, uh, even Saladeng, Chong Nanti, Samyan. Okay, uh, we have a project recently uh, in Samyan, right? I think it's quite a decent project. Okay, and then uh, so Lumpini, right, is where Lumpini Park is. So this whole area, right? there's this wireless road that goes down from uh, Blanche to Dumpini so it's quite a wide road but uh, you know Bangkok always has gems yeah but it's quite a scenic road that leads all the way down then you can get to Lumpini Park from Lumpini Park right if you if you focus your analysis on Lumpini Park it's not a good start it's not a bad starting point as well the main reason is because Lumpini Park is really very central okay and a lot of people don't know the history of uh, wireless road so the name wireless road uh, doesn't mean that the road does not have wires because that's what a lot of people say but the fact of the matter is that wireless road is named as such is because uh, when they were building Bangkok as the city right um, they needed to house the broadcasting station and then wireless road was uh, the place where they put the first broadcasting station because it could transmit well to the rest of Bangkok so that's how central wireless road is okay so you know the history then you will understand that it, this is maybe the most central part of bangkok and then it's uh it's indisputable because history supports your conclusion as well okay and then next right i would say right um then we have tonglo ekamai onut which is 
uh, essentially the prime residential enclave which is popular with all the rich trendy ties expatriates as well so if you ask me personally right where would i live if i were to live in uh, bangkok then i would say around tonglo ikamai area as well okay so if you're into japanese food then this is it uh, then this is uh, m quartier okay so um, there's a lot of high-end uh, japanese restaurants all in this area okay and if you 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 zoom in right to the to the map then you would focus your your search around these areas which is uh prom pong then all the way down to like or oh, this area okay so the the growth areas would be like like punaviti udum so bangna so there's a mega bangna station which is here so okay this gray line right you must take it with a pinch of salt the main reason why I say this is because um, the yellow line and the like the gold line even which is now in operational this is the gold line right or the purple line all these were uh, confirmed plans but the grey line right is something which is not confirmed and this is something which we tell our clients uh, when they purchase properties along Tong Lo Soi Ten because there's a huge project and it's a very popular project and there are many popular projects along the heart of Tong Law. Uh, you purchase Tong Law not because it's close to the BTS station but because of the not because of the sheer amount of amenities and the livability of the area. It is very unique and I think that you cannot find that in Bangkok. So if you are saying that oh I'm gonna buy Tong Law at this price because I think the grey line will come out. The fact of the matter is that the grey line is not confirmed as of the time I'm creating this video. Okay, so that means that it's not an approved project yet and it's something in the talks. But if you can see, right, there's a plan for this Tong Law 10, which means that it's supposed to go from Tong Law Soi 10. And Tong Law Soi 10 is a very short, uh, short road, which, is, which actually starts, uh, I mean, it ends at uh, Donkey Mall and it uh, links all the way back to, I think, the Soi 55 or 53 road, uh, which is the Sukhumvit, the one that's very, very wide. Okay, so this Tong Law 10, it's a possibility and I would say that um, the area itself without the train station is already a huge draw. So it's something that uh, you might want to consider as well. Okay, so next right, we go down to this Rama 9. Okay, so where is Rama 9? Uh, we go back to this map. Okay, Ramanai Rai is here, Param Kao. So that means that from Asok BTS station, you come down, you go to Sukhumvi MRT, you take up to Petbury, then you take to Param Kao. Okay, the Thailand Cultural Centre right, is where the Chinese Embassy is, and there's I think there's an AIA tower as well, and the Stock Exchange of Thailand. So this area right, is also considered like the newer business district of uh, Bangkok. Okay, I would say that the congestion in this area is not as bad as the congestion in the Silong and Saton area. But other than that, right, I think that the 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 Paramgao Thailand Cultural Center area, right, uh, is quite a decent, nice area to live in. Okay, and of course there's this um, orange line which will come out later. Uh, it's actually under construction now. So if you go to Thailand Cultural Center, uh, you can see this as well. Okay. Yeah, I never taken is the orange line up. I don't think the orange line is up. Uh, the yellow line is it should be up. I'm the yellow line is up. Okay, so uh yeah, these are the things that I mentioned previously. Uh, it's actually one stop to the airport rail link, uh, one stop to the future M orange MRT line, which is the one at the Thailand Cultural Center, then two stops to Asok Interchange, which is this station here. Okay, so from here, right, you take one, two, you get to Paramkau. You take one down, this is the airport railing. It gets you to Suwanapum. So you see this airport railing here, right? Uh, this Makassan station. Yeah, so Makassan is what they call it on the airport railing. But Makassan is linked to Pechburi. Okay, so if you if you come down from Suwanapum, then you want to go all the way to uh, Asok, right? Maybe you can drop off at February, then you take one stop down to Asok. If not, right, what you do is that you go all the way to Payatai, 
and then you can take the green line as well so you can end up still at Asok but just a longer route only which actually I would kind of recommend if you're holding a lot of stuff because then you don't the distance from Pachiburi to Makassan is actually quite far okay so this is a stock exchange of Thailand and AIA Capital Tower okay this is the Grand Ramanine thing uh, it's greatly reduced a cautionary tale I put here is because uh, when you're purchasing properties in Bangkok right I always tell my clients right that uh, you need to consider everything with a pinch of salt why I say that is because um, when you when you buy properties in Bangkok and then they say this area is going to have a lot of growth uh, those plans can be greatly derailed especially when the political party may not be there to see the project through okay and this is one of these are one of the uh, this one example which uh, which manifested a um, couple of years ago okay so Grand Raman 9 right was this uh, this plan to have this super tower uh, supposed to be the tallest building in Bangkok but now currently it's job fair so you go to the night market right you see oh it's, it's just a night market but actually there's supposed to be a super tower here it's supposed to be the tallest building uh, in Bangkok tallest or maybe second tallest I'm not sure but anyway it's supposed to be this huge building which is built here but after they did a feasibility study right they scrapped the the the, the whole plan as well okay so yeah, this is the Unilever headquarters which is here and yeah this G tower then uh, this is where the MRT station is so you come out right you can get to all these places so this uh, Esplanade night market okay these are locations uh, which is like one stop away from one stop away from uh, this uh, Paramgao okay so generally right in conclusion right what I would say is that the central business district area is your area which is uh, on the train line and you should be familiar with the train line so if you are if you put money into a into a property in Bangkok right then you don't know the train line um, doesn't really make much sense you should be quite familiar with where you are purchasing at least you should be able to go to your own condominium okay so and in most cases right um, just because the brochure says that it is close to let's say Chit Lom doesn't mean that it is actually uh, in fact close to Chitlong because we've had clients whereby they bought properties in uh, the Ramanai area uh, what the brochure shows is actually the distance which is measured uh, diagonally across in a straight line from the condominium to the train station but the fact of the matter is that there is no true route in a straight line you usually have to navigate your way so we have we have clients who are who purchase what well, right all the way inside very deep into uh well, a lot of like very very small uh alleyways and then there suddenly pops up a condominium which is sold to um people in Hong Kong and then these people in Hong Kong right they didn't see the property when they bought it so the main rationale of why we run the YouTube channel is because we physically walk from the train station to the development or to the from the development back to the train station and that gives buyers an idea or a sense of how close or how far the development is from the train station okay so um central business district is uh, i would say from here all the way the ratatouille siam chitlom plonchit uh, maybe nana also also can include then you have the Silom, Saladeng, Samyan, Dumpini area. This whole area, right, is your real central central Bangkok. But because it's so central, the prices are uh, significantly higher as let's say a condominium in I would say Laprao area or maybe Onut. Okay, if you want to uh if you want expatriate uh tenants, really high-end development, then this central area would be your choice. My second choice, uh, as in my second portion of my presentation, would of course focus on the Tonglo, Ekamai, Prakanon, Onut area, and of course Prom Pong also. This area, I would say, is the first choice for many property investors. The main reason is because you still get very good tenants. The main reason why the tenants are willing to live further away from the central business district is because of 
the area the draw of the area the number of restaurants uh the number of amenities that are around this area the number of good schools international schools especially if uh you know they have uh, many young school going children is a huge draw for this area okay so if you are looking to purchase uh, to rent out to good uh, profile tenants right then this would be it as well okay so then the next area to consider which i mentioned uh, is actually your ramanai area which is here so you can actually consider all the way up to hui huang or sutisan as well okay because uh, it, it's a spillover okay the ramanai area right um previously when the super tower was slated uh, the prices just kept going and it was a bit crazy so once the super tower was uh, cancelled then the prices eased off quite significantly so this is something that uh, you may want to consider as well then another area which is here your higher lap brow lap brow area or your chatu chat uh, bouncer area uh, this is an area of growth so if you if you really uh, if you really want something whereby you know I know that in future property prices are going to increase significantly right uh, that's a possibility then it's here so is anything a certainty no is it a possibility yes uh, this is how you should approach uh, investing in properties then of course uh, something that I never mentioned in my uh, presentation is that uh, places like uh, along the river, along the Chao Praia River, uh, they are also very livable areas. The fact of the matter is that um, these areas are not as developed as compared to maybe the CBD area or the Tong Lo Ekamai area or even the Lap Prao area. But there are a lot of buyers who are looking for properties in and around the riverside as well. So as we speak, right, I have clients who are messaging me uh, do you have a riverside property okay because uh, suddenly it's the in thing to live by the river but i think um, maybe it isn't so much of an in thing as people wanting you know that kind of lifestyle okay so therefore you can see uh, properties right along the chong Monsi, surasa which already uh, generally were very high in demand but now uh, demand is also moving further down to the sapan taksin then even along the goal line and even further down so these areas are uh, worth your consideration if let's say you are looking for uh, one area one cbd property and then one whereby you think that there's some growth potential then maybe this you can consider this uh, on top of uh, as well as the lap brow area as well okay so these are these are locations and this map right uh, very grateful to let me see who is the one who created it. This Mahido University Faculty of Engineering. So they, they sort of made sense of the whole uh, web of rail network that is the Bangkok uh, Metro network. And then they pieced it all together. Okay, so uh, this is something that um, you... I will, I will put a link in our in our description below uh, to download the map um, you can use it in your analysis as well it's someone else's map so we, we need to accord the the relevant uh, credit back to them so we'll actually link a uh, location to the map or maybe we try to put uh, somewhere to download but the credits are within the map yeah, so we're not using it and passing it off as our own okay uh, what we do right is that uh, we have this investbankofproperty.com map uh, you can see it on our website so you can click and you can navigate um, in comparison to the train lines and we'll try to put up uh, as many uh, projects as possible okay um, if you have any queries right um, please uh, email me uh, daryl at investbankofproperty.com or you can email our general uh, helpline which is info at investbankofproperty.com okay uh, that's all from me and I'll see you at the next video bye